soon. And uh, you know that. And uh, so I don't want to uh, say another word. He, he needs. He, he doesn't. No introduction. No introduction. No introduction. So at this time, please welcome to the podium, Imam, our brother, Imam Dr. Nasir Ahmed. Tabir! 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 I see reference with Allah against the rejected enemy Satan. I bear witness that none deserves to be worshipped except for Allah alone. No partner has he. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger, the last seal of all of the prophets sent to all of humanity. We ask Allah's exaltation and blessings upon our leader Muhammad, upon his family, the companions, the believers, the righteous people all over the world. Amen. Amen. And we say to you, as salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Why, thank you. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And I might not see you later, so I say eat and bed. And I too give my thanks and appreciation to the president of the mosque is. Well, thank you, thank you, brother. Yeah, I, I, I tease him sometimes. He doesn't remember. I used to be with his daddy. He was a little bitty boy. Because he and his brother would be throwing, his brother would be throwing toys back and forth to each other. And his father would say, they're not going to bother you. Don't worry about it. This is the two that we have to do. <laughs> and I'm so happy to see that you in the, in the footsteps. Well, as well as your grandfather. Thank you. I worked under your grandfather also. I know I don't look like you. So our resident Imam, Abdul Kareem Muhammad. I mean, man, I tell you, you know, <coughs> the Prophet Muhammad said there are two people that you could be jealous of. And he's one of them. <laughs> yes. And that meant that. You, he, that jealousy would inspire you to do more good in the way you That's what Muhammad the Prophet meant. We say jealousy in, in, in English, but it meant inspire. Yeah. So the committee that you have here that put this function on, we thank you so very much. <coughs> Imam Ramadan, he's here, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's right after the name of the month, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, brother, I mean, the spirit from your football was all out. Yes, yes, yes. We thank Allah for you. And for all of you believers. You know, a teacher is nothing if he doesn't have students. That's right. Mm. A doctor is nothing if he doesn't have patients. That's right. <laughs> so a leader is nothing if he doesn't have followers. It says, it says, O you who believe, prescribed for you is the fast, as it was prescribed for those before you, and perhaps you may attain God consciousness. God consciousness. You know, you know what it's talking about, and I thank a lot for Muhammad the Prophet and for our leader Imam W. D. Muhammad. Yes. Uh -huh. We would have not known Allah in the correct perspective. We would not know Muhammad as he is to be known were it not for Imam W. D. Muhammad. Uh -huh. And I thank Allah for you to have the tenacity in this Ummah to remain as one solid body in the direction that Muhammad has given us. And I'm talking about Imam W.D. Muhammad. And that direction is the son of the Prophet Muhammad. Yeah. And many people, they didn't understand it. <clears throat> it says, and we have prescribed for you the fast like we prescribed to those before you. 
and I like the way Imam Muhammad put it. He said, you know, Allah is so merciful, this word in Arabic, like kataba, something we it means to write. But kutiba is a, uh, it's called a passive form. You know, you're writing now. You're writing with your pencil? That's an active form, right? right? Mm -hmm. But when you were born, you were not active. You were passive. Mm -hmm. You were a passenger in the car. Right. You had no control. Right. Mm -hmm. So this kutiba is like that. It means that Allah has prescribed for you who believe. The science. And it means that <clears throat> he's the best of doctors. Mm -hmm. Because most doctors will give you a prescription after you sick. <laughs> but Imam Muhammad pointed out to us that Allah is so merciful that he gives us pres a prescription before we sick. Yes. <laughs> you get it now? Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> so we wanna we wanna know who it is we're following. That's right. That is Muhammad the Prophet, yes. <clears throat> but how do we get to that? Just because of the man living in Muhammad. Yes. And whose shoulders did he stand upon? The arm of the life Now, the three blessings of the many blessings in the month of Ramadan, you know, it came in the second year of Hijra, when the prophet he left from Mecca went to Medina, and that's when the fast started, and it was required for the child at the age of puberty, for those who are physically fit, and those who are sane, those are the ones that are required to take the fast. But what is the purpose of this fast? <clears throat> the act of fasting is to help the inner being, the inner being to grow. <clears throat> because it helps you to overcome the natural gravity. You see this bit? I let it go, gravity is going to take it down, right? Okay, <clears throat> that same gravity that took this pin down is the same gravity that pulls against you, against you when you try to stand up as a small child, crawling, right? Mm. Same gravity. <clears throat> and it pulls not only on the physical body, but that gravity pulls against the human growth. Now listen, you know, the hair of the man we mean, when we have hair, the object of the hair is to grow out from under the skin. And as long as it's outside under the skin, you, you brothers, you know we're fine. But when that hair turns and goes back under that skin, we're excruciating pain. So the purpose of the Ramadan fast is to awaken the human being. The physical body is the second womb. The first womb is the womb of our mother, the uterus. And it gives birth to this magnificent thing that we have that we call the flesh body. <clears throat> but the purpose of the flesh body is to stand now as the second womb. To give birth to the human within. Right. To stand over the physical body. Am I making it clear so far? And the objective is to keep the human being to grow outside and stand over the physical body and not to, to grow back under the powers of the flesh of the physical body. It, I, I'm trying to go very slow yes. because these are concepts people told me sometimes I speak too fast. <laughs> so I'm trying to take my, my time so that you can, can get this. We have in this sacred month, as guided by Imam Muhammad, he made sure that we did our tarawih prayers at night and that is the completion of the Quran, right? Yes. One thirtieth of the Quran yes. per day. <clears throat> you'll read it if you read it with an open book, but when you're standing in Tarawih prayer, you're doing a one thirtieth per day. Some people don't know this, so we need to explain this to right. <clears throat> But what is happening there? What, what is going on? <clears throat> What's happening is that Allah has to come into our environment with His own divine word to give our minds something pure to feed upon. You see? <clears throat> our soul, the inner being, is awakened and is freed from the gravity.